Big update in the world of e-learning authoring tools. Adobe this month have released a sneak peek of their new version of Captivate that they're calling Project Charm. And I wanna go through that video, give you my thoughts about what I think of this update because it's actually got me really excited. And if you know anything about me, that's saying a lot because uh, I haven't been the biggest fan of Captivate over the years for really their not so great user interface. So I'm really excited about this. Let's let's kind of dig in and, and I wanna show you what's going on here. Here we are over on the Adobe eLearning blog where they're announcing, like I said, Project Charm. They have this nice sneak peek video here. Hello everybody. This is Pooja. If you don't Our know Pooja, you haven't been, been paying attention to Captivate Adobe stuff very long. Captivate, keeping you, the designer, in mind. Okay, so after a brief intro from Pooja, right off the bat, we can see an updated welcome screen. I can already tell that there's a significant update to the look and feel of things. You can see the templates there at the bottom, updated templates, um, and these uh, different ways to start a new project. I'm really liking this, and it's, a, it's already an improvement. Let's create a course on leading virtual meetings using the default project option. With this, you will see a clean So right here, you can already tell interface. that the user interface is so much cleaner than it was before. I'm really digging this. It's a much cleaner interface that seems to mimic what we have going on with other Adobe tools like Adobe XD and things like that that are, have this really modern uh, look and feel to it and very smooth and slick interactions and engagements with things on the screen. And you're starting to see that bleed over into these other Adobe products like Captivate, and that's really exciting to see. One of the things I'm noticing about this interface that's pretty apparent is there isn't a ribbon across the top going horizontally. There's this vertical toolbar that you're kind of used to with other Adobe products. Articulate really went all in with the ribbon when they created a storyline, which pros and cons to the ribbon. Um, maybe it's a personal preference, but I'm kind of digging that it's not here at all. This option looks good to me. I'm kind of baffled Let's by these, edit it now. The, these template choices. Is someone going to create a course on lemon macaroons, cookies? What, what is going on here? There was an emphasis there on using Adobe Stock and switching those out easily. So I, I'm imagining it's fitting into that Adobe ecosystem a little bit better than maybe previous versions of Captivate. So just looking at all of our options here for UI components, we have buttons, checkboxes, radio buttons, input fields, dropdowns, Typical stuff. Slider, a little atypical, but that's good to see. Same thing with mouse and dial. Mouse, I'm assuming, would be like a drag and drop interaction, or why is there not even a, a thumbnail there? But you know, this is just a sneak peek. I don't want to be too harsh. I kind of like this updated look and feel to how to edit the states of buttons. Uh, I know that's something you could already do in Captivate, but it looks like it's a little bit cleaner. So here they just said you can switch to the audio panel. So that's another UI element is these things over here on the right. You have your audio panel. I guess this is just maybe basic settings or adjustments properties. This is probably triggers and act, um, variables, whatever they call them in Captivate and probably animations, I'm assuming. So that's kind of cool here. All this functionality just represented by these few icons saving tons of screen real estate. See, they're doing some editing uh, of the video, so it's going by super quick. So I can't actually tell what's happening here, but it looks like she added five images at once. And I think they're editing it to look like it's actually happening faster than it actually does. Stacked on top of each other. Somehow five images from Adobe's stock library come out of nowhere. Here we see the timeline, and this looks so nice, so clean uh, compared to what was in Captivate. I have one concern here though, which is that, and, and again, I see this in Storyline, is yes, this is nice and clean and everything has its own nice spacing to it, but now we're taking up a lot of vertical screen real estate with this. And when we, when we have a lot of things on the timeline, it really starts to get cumbersome to scroll up and down through all of those. So I'm really hoping that there's some way that we can um, shrink those down to give like a condensed view. So that's what I'm kind of hoping for here on the timeline. But oh my gosh, this looks so nice. Use this newly added distribute sequentially option to magically distribute your images on the timeline. Such a cool feature. Then click the play button. Pretty standard stuff when it comes to animation. I get a little concerned when companies get super excited about all the fancy transitions and animations that they have because generally speaking you don't want to get too fancy you want to keep things subtle here's where they start to go through their pre-built interactivity here we have a click to reveal some text it looks really nice and slick the one thing that worries me here a little bit with these is the options that you have 
So I see that there's some preset options. Am I stuck with these presets? Can I edit? Can I add more presets? I don't know at this point. And it's actually something that I'm really concerned about because Articulate is the market leader in this space right now. And I'm afraid that the competition is looking at that and saying, okay, they must be doing something right. So let's do what Articulate is doing. But what Articulate has always done, it's kind of like the bread and butter of their, their company is like, we're just going to make these tools that do things really nice. And then if you want to customize those, we'll give you a few options, but not much. And that's it. That's great for people that are just very entry level, just kind of doing things and hitting publish and want to be done. But for those of us that really want to take things further and actually our jobs are kind of to take these tools as far as they can go, it can be incredibly frustrating when we hit a brick wall and either can't do something or have to do some hacky workaround to, to get it done. Adobe, if you're listening, please don't follow that route because one of the strengths of your tool is always been that you can go a little bit further with things even if it's been a little bit clunky and, and takes some extra clicks to do or wasn't the most elegant solution, you could at least get it done. Please don't lose that in pursuit of going head to head with other authoring tool vendors. They're previewing this interactivity and what it actually looks like when the, the learner would be going through it. You'll notice one subtle animation here I think is really cool. When they click from one to another, it just glides over. That's just so subtle, but so cool. But once again, I'm a little concerned, you know, do I have the option to go in and adjust that if I don't want it. Okay, two things that are revealed at this point in the video. The first is that this is the interactive widget toolbar item and that we get a preview of what that looks like and what our options are. So we have tabs, flip cards, hotspots, accordion. So here what they preview is a flip card activity. They chose this option here and they're showing that they can easily transform the number of cards, which is nice. Looks like it went up to maybe six or seven. And then they can edit the front and back very nicely. Again, unfortunately, they are editing this video to make things look like things are happening quicker than they actually are. Every time they go to edit a text box, it's like instantly edited. Really nice looking default interaction. I'm, re I'm really impressed by that. And the fact that you can kind of edit out uh, the number of cards and it still looks okay. Here's where they get into talking about quizzes and the big plus button here. You can tell that it opens up this create new slide option menu. You have your basic slides and then you have question slides down here. And they make it look like they're clicking and automatically answer choices are coming in just because they're editing the video and they're editing themselves out, editing the text. Now, right here, I really love this results screen. Layout, typography, everything going on here is just what you would want to see from a, a well thought out design. And then you have these other options here like they get into, which also look very nice, unlike some other default options and some other authoring tools, which I won't mention. And this right here is such a cool feature where you have the ability to view different responsive layouts side by side. So you have your desktop view here on the left, your mobile view on the right. And then at the same time, you can view how things look. That is just so cool. Storyline has the ability to look at things one at a time, which I think is great, but the ability to see things side by side and troubleshoot things like that is really, I'll, I'll say it, it's a game changer. And this gives you a nice preview of how things will look on a mobile device, you know, swiping through as opposed to just things being on screen. They could have easily went the route of there's just one flip card and then underneath is another, another, and then you have this huge scroll that you're doing on, but the fact that they had it be a swipe thing, I think is great. I wish there was like a little bit of indications here that, that the swiping gesture was, was there. But other than that, I mean, oh my gosh, it's just, looks so nice. This is responsive design right here and Adobe is doing it quite well. So slick. They don't need to, like they didn't need to do those little things when you're building a tool like that to, to have it just like that doesn't benefit anybody, but it just makes for such a better developing experience. The lighting your end users is something that I've not seen in an authoring tool in quite a long time. Just looking at this preview, I'm delighted. It's awesome. That was the sneak peek video that Adobe has given us of Project Charm, the uh, latest and greatest from Adobe Captivate. 
I'm really looking forward to this. They mentioned at the end of the video that the public beta is coming out next month. That's November 2021. I definitely want to get my hands on that. I want to mess around with it. And I will give you my thoughts and impressions in a separate video if I get to do that. So until then, thanks for watching and I will see you then.